Hey guys, what's up? Today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at this. This is an AMD Radeon R9 290. And this is a graphics card that was released almost 10 years ago. And in today's video, we're gonna be testing this graphics card for its modern gaming performance 10 years later. And we're also gonna do a quick mining test on it. Disclaimer, I don't advertise, support, or have any real opinion on graphics card mining. I will not tell you to do it, I won't tell you not to do it. The only thing I advocate for is not buying graphics cards for the sole purpose of mining. I don't recommend doing that, I don't support doing that, and I will tell you right now, if you buy a graphics card for the sole purpose of mining on it, you will likely lose money. I wouldn't recommend it. Now, the goal of today's testing is to figure out whether cards like this are a good temporary solution to the inflated graphics card market. Should you buy one of these almost 10 year old graphics cards for your gaming PC? So let's hook this up on our test bench and get right into the benchmarks. Starting with Rainbow Six Siege. Now paired with a Ryzen 7 2700X, which is plenty adequate for this graphics card's performance, we see relatively decent FPS in Rainbow Six Siege at maximum settings 1080p. Getting on average over 100 FPS is pretty great, although our temperature is kind of out of control. Climbing up gradually to over 90 degrees Celsius is not a good look for any graphics card. And enough time at this temperature will probably melt some solder joints and kill this card in no time. So let's just quickly fix that with a more balanced fan profile using MSI Afterburner. Now, now the card stays nice and cool, except for the fact it's super freaking loud. Yeah, that's probably not ideal and would be very noticeable if you're gaming on this card. But either way, let's just continue with the benchmarks. So moving on to my new favorite game, Ready or Not, a realistic-ish SWAT Team Simulator that I have honestly fallen in love with for the past few days. This game is very graphically demanding and extremely interesting. So, with that being said, at 1080p epic preset, which is the maximum settings in game, we can actually still get over 60 FPS at some points. At many other points, we are below and even well below 60, averaging out at about 47 FPS throughout our run of the car dealership map. Now on lower settings, this game will be more than playable and still look pretty amazing. So I'm not too worried about this graphics card's performance in this game. Now our card is pegged at 100% utilization the entire time. And although the temperature is relatively okay in the mid 70s degrees Celsius, again, it's super freaking loud. So Maybe a tactical shooter where you need to listen for enemies isn't the best choice for a graphics card like this. Moving on to Red Dead Redemption 2 at medium settings 1080p, and again we see the game is cinematically playable at best. Averaging about 30 FPS, the game looks alright, there's a few visual glitches, it looks like there's some screen tearing actually, and it's actually kind of uncomfortable to look at if you ask me. Maybe it was just me when I was looking at the screen and playing it, but quite frankly, it just doesn't look amazing. At lowest possible settings, the game might be slightly more playable, but I wouldn't really recommend a card like this for Red Dead Redemption 2. Because again, pegged at 100% utilization, your card will be very loud, and that is a recurring theme we'll have to talk about towards the end of the video. Now, finally, moving on to our last game for our benchmarks, Grand Theft Auto V, which I just feel is a great game because actually it came out about the same year that this card did, albeit it came out on PC two years after, but you get the point. And at 1080p maxed out ultra settings with 4x MSAA enabled, we're actually only getting like 33 FPS. Depending on where we are or what we're driving, etc., we see anywhere from 30 to 50 FPS in game, and it's again cinematically playable. Now turn off MSA, you're getting over 60 with a decent system, and it's absolutely fine. But just something to note that even this old game on this, what was at the time a flagship graphics card, still can pose a challenge for this hardware. All right guys, so 
With all of the benchmarks in mind for this graphics card, do I recommend buying something like this for one to two hundred dollars on eBay, given its performance to price ratio and the fact that it's a ten year old card? Well, I would say no, which is surprising because I freaking love this card. I actually bought this from one of my viewers. Thanks, Steve. And I just love the design of the card. It looks really amazing, even though it's you know, pretty old. Now, mine's a bit dusty despite trying to clean it. I haven't opened it up yet, but I can assure you it's probably a mess on the inside. I mean, just look at the back. So maybe if you get one, you'll end up with a quieter card. But the bottom line is this is a hot card. It is inefficient. You've got an eight and a six pin for the performance of essentially a GTX 1060 at best. And it will heat up your room and raise your power bill for subpar performance given its price. So I don't recommend a card like this unless you can find one for, I'd say anything over $75 is too much money. Now, at the default fan profile, this card will overheat. That's how it was designed. It is a card that the stock version has a blower cooler and it will overheat at default fan profile. So setting a new one is your best bet. Now, you can tune yours probably better than I could, but you'll probably be running in the 80 plus degrees Celsius range your entire time. And considering these graphics cards are all used and very old, you could end up with a dead card very quickly. So I don't really recommend it. But now for shits and giggles, let's test the mining performance of this card. Now, again, I will say, I'm not advertising mining, I'm not recommending it, I just wanted to show this card because, well, it was one of the most popular mining cards way back when it came out. Back when you could mine for bitcoins at a time, using a graphics card and not an ASIC, this card, and actually it was a little bit before it with the HD 7990s and all that, was one of the most popular. Nowadays, mining not bitcoin, because that's impossible with a graphics card, I'll tell you that right now, this card makes about 50 cents a day, which actually isn't terrible considering its age, except for the fact that if you add in any kind of power cost, you will lose money. This card making 50 cents a day at a 10 cents per kilowatt hour power cost would actually lose you 10 cents a day. So you'd be paying 60 cents a day just to run this card and, and only making 50 cents back. So that's like, so it's not good. And I wouldn't recommend mining on it anyway, because again, that power inefficiency and just the whole heat thing and the, there's better cards for that, but whatever. I just, I find that kind of funny. I just, I don't know, it's, it's kind of funny to me. So bottom line, this card, it isn't the solution you're looking for. It's not that magic card that you can buy for the right price and game on efficiently. It's not the hidden gem we were hoping for. You're not gonna buy this card for 50 bucks and get and get 1080p 60fps plus on any game. This is an old card that's well way past its prime. Its driver support has ended in 2021 and there's really nowhere to go with it. If you can get one for super cheap, which sometimes happens, it might be worth it as a temporary solution, but this shouldn't be your permanent graphics card in any sense. So with that, I hope you guys have kind of enjoyed this video. That is one of my favorite graphics cards of all time. It was super nice. I was, I was very interested in it when it came out 10 years ago, and I still find it very awesome today as I've only recently been able to acquire one. So with that being said, that's all I have for you guys today. Hope you kind of enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.